Hi, uh, welcome to this particular module and in this module we will be looking at how can we measure simultaneously electrical and mechanical property of breast tissue. So, we can say phenotyping of breast tissue and uh, we <coughs> in the last few modules we are concentrating on developing a novel platforms uh, or at least novel sensors right uh, that can be indicated with additive manufacturing that is a 3D printing and a electronic system. So, that we can measure the change in the elasticity of the tissue or we can measure the change in the resistance of the tissue right. We have also seen that we can measure the thermal uh, conductivity of the tissue. Now, let us focus and see how can we fabricate of uh, a sensor that is integrated with a, mecha uh, a mechanical sensor or, a, or a, uh, a sensor that is integrated with two different kind of uh, sensors one is electrical and second is mechanical or in other ways a sensor that can measure a mechanical property and an electrical property of tissue. Right. This you can see uh, actual photograph of the fabricated sensor, it is a flexible in nature right we are we are fabricating the sensor on a PDMS this is a silicon PDMS right and what we can see here is that sensor consists of a piezo resistor you can see A these are piezo resistors uh, a magnified version of one single piezo resistor you can see here right uh, and this piezo resistors uh, or array of this piezo resistors are made up from p dot p s s p dot p s s all right. Now, on this piezo resistors we want to uh, have the gold pad. Now, as you know we cannot have uh, a gold pad or metal directly on semiconductor. So, we need to have an insulator. So, we will have an insulator on this array and on that we will have a gold pad right. Now, this insulator can be silicon nit nitride can be silicon dioxide. Now, you can see a magnified image of a single gold pad right over here. These are all SEM images, SEM stands for scanning electron microscopy. Once you have that then on this electrode I want to have pillars and these pillars are my SU8 pillars. These are my SU8 pillars, you can see the SU8 pillars right over here when you zoom in you can see that SU8 pillars very clearly and I am coating this SU8 pillars with gold when you coat with gold you can see uh, inset showing the SU8 pillars coated with gold all right. So, now the what will I do if I have a sensor which is flexible in nature and that can help us help us to measurement help us to measure uh, the mechanical and electrical property of tissue right. How can I use it and first of all how can I fabricate it right. So, you see the fabrication process is shown here from here to here. Hmm? So, what exactly the fabrication process is all about A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, A to I <laughs> it is from A to I. So, uh, it is not about A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I it is about understanding what is the first wafer, first wafer is oxidized silicon wafer. Then what is there on oxidized silicon wafer? We have PDMS on oxidized silicon wafer, we will cure PDMS. What is the next step? We will have chrome gold interdigital electrodes. What is the next step? We will have P dot P S S spin coated and pattern to form piezo resistors. What is the next step? We will deposit silicon dioxide on piezo resistors. What is the next step? We will open the contact and we will then deposit gold pad. What is the next step? We will we'll spin coat SU8 and pattern to form SU8 pillars. What is the next step? Next step is to make SU8 pillar conductive by coating it with a metal and finally, you have to release the device you have to uh, uh, strip the PDMS from the oxidized silicon wafer to realize the chip right or realize the 
sensor. So, now let us see how can we fabricate this right now you all are I hope expert in fabricating the sensor. Now, if you just uh, zoom in and uh, uh, see the schematics, uh, this is this are schematics drawn using software called SolidWorks. Now, uh, I, at that time we use yeah, SolidWorks and we can see clearly that this is a complete sensor and when you magnify it, you can see uh, a piezo register over there, there are gold pads on this over there, there were uh, SUA pillars which are conductive when you magnify this one as well. So, this is like see this area if I take this area and magnify it, it looks like this. If I take this area and magnify it further, it looks like this right and this is an actual sensor on PDMS right which is not stripped off for or, or not a, uh, uh, stripped from the oxidized silicon wafer. So, this is PDMS and on PDMS there is a sensor. Hmm. So, this tiny part in the center here is a sensor, it consists of all these things right. These are contacts, these are contacts. Now, you can see there are three contacts right, three contacts or I should say there are many contacts, but three contact pads uh, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 contacts. So, 8 sensors should be there and 2 are for piezo register and 1 is for gold pad or SU8 pillar coated with gold pad, 2 are for piezo, 1 for gold pad. Okay. That is a why we have 3 contact pads uh, in this particular design and then if I want to see how is going to work, let us see. So, oxidized silicon substrate. So, first is we will take a silicon wafer, next step is we will grow silicon dioxide, this becomes my A. silicon silicon dioxide. Next step is I will spin coat, I will spin coat PDMS and cure it, spin coat PDMS and cure it. this is my B right. Next step is I will deposit metal on PDMS, on PDMS I will deposit a metal. All right. Next step is I will I have to pattern the metal right. I have to pattern the metal. So, next step would be we take the wafer and we spin coat we spin coat what we spin coat photo resist right. right. After this what is the next step? Soft bake, soft bake. Next step After soft bake next step is mask right. What kind of mask? What kind of mask? Bright field mask. Now, you can see only contact area right. So, I will just draw two just to make it easier, 
just draw two right field mask to obtain to obtain piezo resistive sensor to obtain piezo resistive sensor right. Uh, so, why only two because we have to have this gold pads or contact that can help us to measure the change in the resistance from the piezo resistance. That is what I, I meant by my earlier sentence to obtain piezo resistive sensor is to understand the change in the piezo resistivity of the sensor with the help of gold pad. These are contact pads. Okay. So, this is bright field mask I will do the lithography. Uh, so, I will go for the UV after UV exposure I will go for uh, photoresist developer. <coughs> when I develop my photoresist then what will I have? I will have my interdigitated electrodes no that is wrong I will have my contact pads right I will have my contact pads. So, after this UV lithography what is the next step? Next step is photoresist developer. When you do photoresist developer what will have? You will have photoresist only in this region right and this is your chrome gold. Correct? Chrome gold. Then I will dip this wafer in chrome and gold agent after doing hard bake what will I have? I will have contact area with my photoresist right. After this I will deposit or I will uh, dip this wafer I will dip this wafer in acetone. When you dip the wafer in acetone what will happen? my photoresist will be stripped off. When my photoresist will be stripped off what will I have? I will have contact pads, I will have the contact pads right. This is my D, this is my C, C okay. Now, what do we want? We want a piezo resistive materials right, we want a piezo resistive sensor. So, a we have seen, B we have seen, C we have seen, now it is time for D. So, we will have oxidized silicon substrate, contact pads and then we will spin coat will spin coat P dot P S S next step is perform the photolithography. That means spin coat photoresist, then load mask, right? Here we require bright field mask. I will show you how mask will look like. Mask will look like this because we want to protect the foot the P dot P S S material such that it will pattern we want if you want to see the top view what we have done until now is we have made, we have made this. Now, what we want is a piece of resistive material. like this all right. So, this guy we have to pattern it right this is what we are looking at right now and then now we have only used this much without this like this contact pad. Hmm? 
Now, I will show you why we have using the zigzag pattern like this. The zigzag pattern to take a contact instead of a straight pattern is to reduce the stress in the film, is reduce the stress in the film because it is a flexible material. Hmm. So, we are using a mask which is a bright film mask and then after that uh, of course, after spin coating photoregist we have to do soft pick we already know that load the mask then do UV exposure then you have to do photoregist developer right photoregist developer then after photoregist developer you have to do the hard bake and after hard bake you have to etch p dot pss from the regions which are from the regions which we do not want to protect. So, if I, I am uh, etching the p dot pss from the region which we do not want to protect right then what will I have I will have uh, p dot pss on my electrodes like this all right I will have my p dot pss on the electrodes that is my d that is d. Okay. Now, after this the next step is I want to I want to so it is like somewhere let me draw like this it becomes a little bit easier to understand all right. Let me give some design to p dot pss so easy for us to uh, differentiate this is p dot pss these are my interdigited no these are my contact pads made up of chrome gold right made up of chrome gold now on this what we will do we will we will deposit we will deposit silicon dioxide using pecvd plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition okay. and then we will again perform a photolithography process photolithography process where we will spin coat the positive photoregist then we will load the mask this time our mask design would be we will use a dark fill mask we will use a dark fill mask and why because we do not want we do not want silicon dioxide on the contact area on the contact area and remaining area remaining area we want silicon dioxide that is on the piezo resistor sensor we want silicon dioxide from the remaining area we will etch silicon dioxide that is from the contact pad right from here and here after this PR developer hard bake. So, here it is not a dark bright fill mask this will be my dark fill mask field is dark pattern is bright right. Then I have to go for photoregist developer again please look at the slide photoregist developer then hard bake then he this time we have to etch the silicon dioxide. So, for etching silicon dioxide we will use buffer hydrofluoric acid BHF all right. For when I do that what will I have I will have silicon dioxide with photoregist silicon dioxide with some photoregist. Hmm. Now, next step we have to strip out the photoregist stripping of the photoregist we have to dip the wafer in the acetone. When we dip this wafer in acetone what you will have you will have your piezo resistor sensor on which there is an insulator and the contact pads are open right that will be my E 
that will be my E. You got it? So, in the next module, let us see how on this piezo resistor sensor, like you have this piezo resistor sensor, right, like this, how on this piezo resistor sensor we will have already insulator is there, we will have a gold pad, hmm? we will have a gold pad. We will see in the next module how you can do that. to realize the uh, next step for the device. Hmm. So, till then till you just look at this module understand how we are using a PDMS which is a soft material is a silicon S I L I C O N E to fabricate uh, a flexible sensor right. What we have seen until now is you take a silicon wafer then this is our silicon wafer S I L I C O N silicon wafer you oxidize it with silicon dioxide uh, spin core PDMS right uh, cure PDMS on that you deposit chrome gold you pattern comb gold uh, chrome and gold on that you uh, spin coat P dot PSS which is a piezo resistive material on that you uh, pattern it uh, using photolithography to form piezo resistive sensors right over that you deposit silicon dioxide and you open the contact uh, pads uh, of the piezo resistive sensors. The next module let us see how can we further deposit chrome gold from the gold pad on that how can we deposit SUI pillar make it conductive and then we will see how can you install this sensor to understand the change in the tissue property right. He, with this we can understand simultaneously mechanical and electrical properties of the tissue because there is a piezo resistor and there is a gold pad with, with SUI pillar which acts as a electrical sensor or one probe of the electrical sensor. Right. So, till then you take care, I will see you in the next class, bye.